This is Duke University. I'd like to start by thanking DUCIGS and especially the Africa Initiative for their support um, and bringing us back this year. This is our second year um, as part of the Elephant Working Group. Um, and I'm going to be talking a lot about forest elephants, and this is truly a crisis. Um, and so it's really great that we have the support to help protect this rapidly disappearing species. Um, so a little bit of background on elephants. Elephants used to inhabit most of Africa. But as you can see from the map on the left, their ra previous range is extremely fragmented compared to what it used to be. Elephants are really being reduced to protected areas because of human development. Forest elephants are actually a separate species from the better known savanna elephants. Africa has two species. Forest elephants inhabit most of central and little areas of West Africa. Um, in addition to being smaller, forest elephants also have other physical differences from savanna elephants. Uh, they have straighter tusks. Um, they also have longer eyelashes. All of these are adaptations to better live in a dense jungle habitat. Uh, in addition to these physical differences, they have a slightly different diet, which means that they get to eat more, they have more iron in their diet um, from eating different clays and different fruits. And this tinges their ivory a uh, pinkish, orangish color. So this in combination with the straightness of their tusks actually makes them more valuable on the black market. This issue is also compounded by the fact that um, forest elephants lives in, live in countries that are more susceptible to corruption, um, which is not, not good news for these guys. Um, addition, so the story of elephants being poached for ivory is not a new story. However, the levels that they're being poached at is um, elephants are being poached at a rate that's higher than ever before seen um, and in recent years. So on the left is a study that our lab has done as part of the working group. Uh, there was a study in 2014 that went to this national park in Gabon, uh, looked for elephants, found around 30,000, which is a solid density. Um, we returned there in 2014 to look for elephants again, and we saw a dramatic decrease of about 80%. Um, it's a lot of elephants. It's close to 20,000 elephants that we've lost. Um, another study that was done in 2011 compared elephant numbers in 2002 to 2011. Um, in the map, dark green spots are heavy densities. Green is where there's elephants grazed. There might be, but probably not. So as you look at the shift from the 2002 to 2011, we lost a lot of areas where elephants are, and no place has the same densities as before. And this is because it's a growing international issue. Um, the map on the left shows trade routes. So the sophistication of the ivory trade has greatly increased. Um, ivory trade is now found very frequently to happen along the lines of drug, international drug trade and human trafficking. So these are highly organized groups that are moving Afri sorry, um, ivory from Africa to Asia. Uh, the map on the right is showing kind of where ivory is going from East Africa, spends some time in Malaysia as kind of the middleman countries into China and Thailand. Um, we're expe we expect that this increase in the ivory demand is because of the growing middle class in these Asian countries. Ivory is a sign of wealth, and so if you have more ivory or if you have a little token of ivory, it shows that your family is succeeding. So this is important beyond the fact that we're losing an iconic species. Forest elephants especially are essential for the tropical ecosystem. Um, for, for the trees, they disperse seeds, which normally wouldn't be able to grow into trees if they weren't moved by the elephants. They increase access to nutrients for both other animals and for the trees. And important to us, because of their trampling, they increase the chances for trees to grow large and become huge carbon stores, which with our current climate issue, the more carbon we can store, the better, um, because there's a trade-off between this dense underbrush and big trees. Um, this figure is from a paper that we're about to publish that we created as a working group this semester. Thank you. Um, so who are we? Uh, the Elephant Working Group is a combination of three departments across Duke. Um, we're primarily housed in the Nicholas School with the Paulson Lab. 
but we also have members from the biology department and the human autonomy lab um, in the Pratt School of Engineering, all kind of working on different aspects of how to better protect elephants. Um, as requested, I want to mention that we have a site, so if you're curious more of what we're doing, we've also done drone surveys to look for elephants. We have a GPS calling program. You can all check us out on this website. Uh, we'd love feedback or participation. The more people we can get on this problem, the better. Um, in addition to working within Duke, uh, we've made collaborations with the Gabonese Park Agency to put GPS collars on 34 elephants across the country so we can better understand them. Very, very little is known about forest elephants in comparison to savanna elephants, and so we're trying to crack that problem. And this is why. Um, there are actually elephants in both these pictures, um, but studying forest elephants on the ground is kind of like a dangerous game of where's Waldo. Um, so I was... I didn't take these pictures, but I was next to the person taking these pictures this summer, and you have to get really, really close to kind of see blobs of gray. So you can't study how many there are. You can't study who's there. So this is why this coloring, this coloring that we're now working on as an elephant working group is really important. Um, so we focus on movement data. So each color represents a different elephant and where they've been over the past year, um, which looks really hectic on the map, but we can now break it down um, this is stuff that we've been doing the past couple of weeks, and so we're really excited to actually have products to show you guys. Um, so we can break it down to what sort of habitat are the elephants hanging out in, mostly forest or a little bit of savanna. How does that shift? We can also look at who they're hanging out with. So we can see that this elephant, Nana, is the most social of the group. And then the bars in between the dots, which represent elephants, are how many times they hang out. So we see that we have a pair over here that are hanging out a lot. <laughs> they're buds. Um, we can also look at when they're hanging out. So we can see that June and July, we don't really have interactions, whereas compared to other months of the year, the elephants are hanging out a fair amount. So this is great, and I can show you graph after graph after graph. But the end goal is to predict where elephants are going to be. So now we can start to say that I know June and July are dry season months, but in the rainy seasons, elephants like to hang out. We also know that elephants like to hang out in the savanna during the rainy season. So we can now work with park management in these countries and help them send their anti-poaching patrols to the areas where elephants are. So our goal is to shift anti-poaching patrols to be active following where the elephants are, as opposed to reactive as it currently is, following where they're seeing carcasses or going to where they think they've seen poaching signs. Uh, so we really want to get out where the elephants are and alive, um, which is pretty cool that we're getting closer to doing this. Um, in the spring, so in addition to continue analyzing this movement and working on models, that'll be a long-term goal over the next four years or so, uh, we're going to work on a paper that um, are Central African parks enough? Central Africa populations are supposed to boom over the next years, and we can predict that as human-elephant conflict increases, we're more and more likely to have elephants reduced to parks. And so we want to look if, are these parks enough, or do we need to act now while there's still space to preserve more land for them. Um, we're hoping to get researchers on the ground studying other things such as their diet and other habitat needs. Um, and finally, work on international collaborations so we can get more people working on this issue. And I'll say thank you one more time for the support. <laughs>